Today we celebrate the Mass of the 28th Sunday in the Ordinary Time. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you. Dear friends in Christ, as we come before the Lord today, we give him praise and thanks. In the Gospel today, the Lord reminds us that he asks us to change things in our lives, the better to serve him. And as we hear those words, let us acknowledge our sins and we prepare to celebrate the sacred mystery. Lord Jesus, you are the source of all blessing. Lord, have mercy. Christ, you are our redemption and our hope. Christ, have mercy. Lord, you invite us to the banquet of eternal life. Lord, have mercy. We Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace and peace, beloved, goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty God, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray at all times go before us and follow after us and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples a feast of rich food and choice wines, juicy rich food and pure choice wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples, the web that is woven over the nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from every face. The reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth, for the Lord has spoken. And on that day it will be said, Behold our God, to whom we look to save us. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. For the hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to God's word. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me. He refreshes my soul. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil. For you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. 
You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians, brothers and sisters. I know how to live in humble circumstances. I know also how to live with abundance. In every circumstance and in all things, I have learned the secret of being well-fed and of going hungry, of living in abundance, and of being in need. I can do all things in Him who strengthens me. Still it was kind of you to share in my distress. My God will fully supply what you need in accord with his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father, glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. May the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of our hearts so that we may know what is the hope that belongs to our call. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you. O Lord. Jesus again in reply spoke to the chief priests and elders of the people in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. He dispatched his servants to summon the invited guests to the feast, but they refused to come. A second time he sent other servants, saying, Tell those invited, Behold, I have prepared my banquet. My calves and fattened cattle are killed, and everything is ready. Come to the feast. Some ignored the invitation, went away, one to his farm, another to his business. And the rest laid hold of his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged and sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The feast is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy to come. Go round there into the main roads and invite to the feast whomever you find. The servants went out into the streets and gathered all they found bad and good alike, and the hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to meet the guests, he saw a man there not dressed in a wedding garb. And the king said to him, My friend, how is it that you came in here without a wedding garment? But he was reduced to silence. Then the king said to his attendants, Bind his hands and feet, and cast him into the darkness outside, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Many are invited, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, our Lord Jesus knew how to tell a story. We can call him the divine storyteller. He uses many stories and images in speaking about his kingdom. 
Today, in the gospel that we have just heard, our Lord gives us the parable of a wedding banquet which the king hosts for his son. There are two sad things in the story. First, the people that were invited to the wedding feast refused to come. They even mistreat and kill the messengers sent to them, inviting them to the feast. That is the first sad part of the gospel. But the second is equally sad. One of the guests who does come refuses to put on a proper wedding garment. In those days, a wedding garment was provided to all the guests. But this man refuses to put it on. And for that reason, he is expelled from the wedding feast. And in this, our Lord is giving us two messages. First, we must not be like those who were invited and refused to come. The Lord invites all of us to his kingdom. It is up, up to us whether we hear his call and follow it or not. And the second message that the Lord gives us is likewise clear. If we want to be part of God's kingdom, then must, we must change ourselves. Unlike the man of the gospel, we must put on the wedding garment of a good and virtuous life a life filled with the grace of God. Only then are we ready to follow him. In just a few days, we will celebrate the feast of one of the greatest popes in the history of the church, Pope St. John Paul II, canonized in 2014. I think of him <clears throat> in terms of the gospel today. He certainly knew what it meant to be invited to God's kingdom, and he knew how much that demanded of him. Carol Wojtyla, the future Pope John Paul II, grew up in Poland in the time of the Nazi persecution of his country. Then, when the Nazis were defeated at the end of World War II, he faced a different kind of persecution from the communist regime that took control of his native Poland. But in the midst of all of this, he maintained his solid faith, confident in the plan of God for him. To put it in terms of today's gospel, he knew that he, like all of us, were invited to be part of God's kingdom, and he let nothing get in his way of answering that call. He would not give in to the godlessness that he saw all around him. Instead, he would remain true to his faith, he would see the kingdom of God. But the second part of the gospel today was equally true of Pope St. John Paul. He knew that he had to put on the wedding garment, in this case, to change his life if he was to be faithful to God's kingdom. At first, he considered becoming a playwright. He enjoyed the theater and wrote several plays. But deep within his heart, he felt that God was calling him to something different, something more. He put aside his theater dreams and changed the direction of his life. He accepted the call of God to the priesthood. He had to study for the priesthood in an underground seminary because 
a seminary was forbidden by the convent. But he persevered, confident that the Lord was with him. He was ordained a priest and truly enjoyed his priestly work among the people, young and old. But God was calling him to change in more ways. He was called to be a professor of philosophy, a university chaplain, a seminary teacher. And then, quite unexpectedly, his life changed again when he was called to be bishop, then archbishop of Krakow, and then again, surprisingly, on October the 16th, 1978, he was called to be Pope. And amid all of these changes in his life, he was ready to do what God asked of him. He was ready to put on the wedding garment of God's grace. He was ready to accept change, always ready to do God's will and not his own. Dear friends, there are so many lessons that we can learn from Pope St. John Paul's life. His determination to pursue his faith, even amid persecution, and his faithfulness in leading the church. As Pope, he called the world to recognize the dignity of every human person, born or unborn. And he called us all to reject what he called the culture of death and to instead be apostles of life. But perhaps the most important lesson comes from today's gospel. First, we, like him, must be ready to answer God's call to the banquet, not letting anything get in our way of living a good life, preparing for the banquet of heaven. And then secondly, as we do that, we must be ready to change, to accept God's will and not our own. Pope St. John Paul did that to the very last day of his life. Despite the suffering that he endured in his later years, he continued to give himself in God's service, and he invites us to do the same. In our lives, God keeps on giving us new wedding garments to put on, and we must be ready to do so. Pope St. John Paul II was ready to accept the changes that God asked of him. He became Pope, but more importantly, he became a saint. May we be ready to accept any changes that the Lord gives to us. And may Pope St. John Paul help us on our way to the banquet, the banquet of eternal life. May God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We join in our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, <clears throat> maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstance with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man for 
our sake he was crucified and the plunge his pipe. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, standing in God's holy presence, we present our needs before him, saying after each of them, Lord, hear our prayer. From our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Archbishop Timothy, Cardinal Dover, and all the leaders of the church, that they will help us to grow in the path of holiness and truth. We pray to the Lord that as we hear the gospel today, we may resolve to prepare for the Lord's kingdom by putting on the garment of faith, hope, and love. We pray to the Lord that during this time of the Eucharistic renewal, we will grow in our love and appreciation of the Holy Eucharist, our Lord's greatest gift to us, his people. We pray to the Lord for the blessing of peace, particularly in Ukraine and in Israel and Palestine, that our Blessed Mother Mary, Queen of Peace, will help to bring peace to countries afflicted by war and civil strife. We pray to the Lord. For our American servicemen and women serving throughout the world, particularly members of our parents, that they will be protected in safety, we pray to the Lord. For doctors, nurses, EMTs, and healthcare professionals, police officers, and firefighters, that the Lord will bless them in their service of us all, we pray to the Lord. For those who are sick and suffering, and for our beloved dead, especially the departed members of our parish, we pray to the Lord. Let us offer our own prayer in silence. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, hear the prayers of your people. Guide and protect us in our journey of life. And one day bring us safely home to your kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, May we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Wash away my iniquity, O Lord, and cleanse me from my sin.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty God. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful people with the sacrifice of offering, that through this act of devotion we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. You have no need of our prayers, yet our desire to thank you is itself your gift. Our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so we join with all the angels and the saints to praise you, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The Lord Jesus now comes to this hall to change bread and wine into his body and blood. Let us welcome him to our hearts. You are indeed holy, O Lord the fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, for sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread, and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks <clears throat> that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember us, my brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty God, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> At our Savior's command, and formed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord. We pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessing of hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world and mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world and mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep us safe of eternal life. Amen. We now invite you to welcome our Lord the spiritual holy communion to your heart.
prayer and the blessing of the Mass, we give thanks to God that we have joined in the holy sacrifice of the Mass today. Let me remind you of the importance of praying for peace. Your prayers may touch many hearts, and we pray that by our prayers, the Prince of Peace, Jesus himself, will bring peace to our troubled world. Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment, that comes from your most holy body and blood, so you may make us sharers in divine life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.